Survivors of a Northern Ontario residential school are in court today. They are pushing to get access to federal documents released that back up their allegations of abuse and that could clear the way for their compensation. These are survivors of the St. Anne's residential school and they're challenging the government's decision to suppress police and court evidence of alleged widespread abuse. A five-year OPP investigation resulted in the conviction of several former employees of the school. This is all taking place in Fort Albany, about 400 kilometers north of Timmins. And my guest here in studio is Edmund Matatawabin. Sorry, I got that right off camera. No, Matatawabin. Right. And he's a former student at St. Anne's, a former chief of Fort Albany First Nation, and my guest. And Edmund, it's very nice of you to come in today. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> What did you just say to me? You said, you said thank you. You told me you were going to thank you for the opportunity to come in. And I should yes. say thank you, which is thank you very much for coming in. <laughs> Your story, let's start with a little bit about you to begin. St. Anne's people know a bit of a notorious school, to say the least. Yes. The abuse is there, considered mm. among the worst in the country. What was life like at St. Anne's as you saw it and experienced it? It was pretty rough. I spent uh, eight years in uh, St. Anne's. I thought it was rough to be there because uh, you encounter a lot of um, harshness, harsh discipline, very harsh, and also a very demeaning activities imposed on you. Uh, would you consider feeding your vomit to a six-year-old child, mm -hmm. which I was forced to do. To, to make it worse, forced to eat vomit. it was a three-day-old because I, I had a flu or something. I got sick and uh, I threw up in my bowl of porridge. And when I got better on the fourth day, they brought back that Porsche to me, and I had to finish it. No choice, no one to defend me, and... Uh, and you were six. Other people talk about doing it 20 times. I thought once was bad, but 20 times, over and over again, you, and... Uh, the, what the worst about the thing is the, the, vile, the vileness of it, the mm -hmm. thought of it, of doing that, and you're defenseless to, um, to do anything about it. There and, were so uh, many cases of physical abuse, there was physical sexual abuse, abuse. it was all part of the whole story of St. Anne's. There was a uh, strapping. Mm -hmm. uh, again, if you were just consider kneeling on the floor, just completely squatting on the floor for half an hour, that's really bad for half an hour. Imagine doing it for one hour and you can't even get up and straighten your knees after that. So a lot of that. So uh, that was the allegations <clears throat> and in 1990s as I mentioned the OPP the provincial police in Ontario investigated yeah. and that investigation led to actual convictions of a number of staff members and supervisors yes. at St. Anne's yes. so there were convictions we you might have, have thought that that might have thought it was behind you then yeah. why are you in court today it didn't happen it didn't seem to matter that we had convictions the church is still saying uh, there were allegations made against them the government is saying there was no uh, evidence of physical and sexual abuse at St. Anne's Residential School, contrary to what happened in court. So you're in court today seeking documents, access to documents. What do you think is in the documents? A uh, five-year police investigation, um, commentary by survivors, and opinions by survivors. So a lot of needed background information. What was residential school? Where was it? Uh, the staff that were there, the students that were there, the number of uh, students in each year. So there was a lot of evidence. And each IAP claimant, it's as if they're doing it for the first time. If I was uh, filing my IAP, I would have to convince the, uh, the lawyer that St. Anne's actually existed. Really, but if go back to the very, very beginning. It's as if there was nothing, absolutely really? nothing, no background, no research. So you can't get access to these documents. We You're can't. fighting the federal government for this. Does the federal government have access to these documents? Well, there it's their They're documents. Theirs. Yes. They're theirs. Uh, yes. Completely theirs. And uh, since the uh, police uh, conducted the investigation and they handed the documents to the two levels of government, I'm not sure which one, but since then they've been collecting dust. And, and why won't they release them to you, do you think? Well, it's, it's evidence. It's uh, uh, facts that say we are telling the truth. And if somebody hides something, then they're afraid that the truth will come out. That's the only way I can see it. 
At this point in your long fight, you're looking for compensation for you and the many other people at St. Anne's. How much would these documents help your We're, quest for compensation? We are probably looking for compensation, you're right. But we're also looking for autonomy, and we're also looking for justice. And if I say I ate my vomit when I was five years old, uh, we don't want the same thing to happen again in the future. Mm -hmm. And we have to tell the truth. The elders want us to tell the truth and put it on the record that this is what actually happened in Canada, and uh, it shouldn't happen again. Federal government's been very vocal about trying to right the wrongs of the residential school system. We had that famous apology from the Prime Minister back in 2008, calling the whole episode a sad chapter in mm -hmm. Canada's history. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a sad chapter, and you're still fighting in that same chapter. How does that We're, make you feel? Well, we are still fighting policy, uh, the new Education Act, that aims to undermine us in our language. So. We're still fighting policy, and every time there's a new direction by government about us, we are on the wrong side of the law. And because we are left to react to policy, which we had no involvement in the shaping of that policy. We had no involvement to the backroom committees. So in initiating a policy without our input, of course, there's going to be some, uh, you know, Sure. Resistance on our part and uh, things that we want to uh, adjust and make more relevant for ourselves. But this is a fight that for you has gone on for more than 40 years, and that is oh, a long I, fight. I had no wrinkles when I started. <laughs> <laughs> Edmund, I thank you very much for coming in. We'll be covering the court appearance today on the story, and thank, thank you for you telling about it. I really me. appreciate thank it. Edwin Matatawabin heading into court in Ontario today.